Welcome to the exciting world of supplies. <laughs> All right, we are going to be discussing some makeup remover options because I know this is a bane, like a bit of contention and confusion and how to use them. Basically, you know, there's a lot of options that you're gonna run into when you go into a store. Some removers have oil in them, some have no oil, there's, you know, different kinds of bombs and oils and ones with no oil in them. Um, and then there's ones that are professional that I like and there's also a few that are in certain lines that are my favorite. Uh, one really, really, we'll just talk about eye makeup remover for starters. The Cinema Secrets one is really well known in the industry and has been used for a really long time. Um, one of my favorite ones, look at I got two bottles here, is uh, the Lise Watier. It's a Canadian brand, so you guys might not have easy, easy access. I'm not sure where you are, um, and it's a spray out. All right, right. we're going to start with what we're going to use to clean our brushes with, okay? So the first one I'm going to show you is, um, this is Lise Watier. I'll grab a brush that's not perfectly clean. Let me see what I've got here. Okay, so let's jump into the world of taking makeup off because that's important as well. We're going to start first. Let's just start with brush cleaning because as we're working on ourselves or working on others, we always have to make sure that our brushes are clean. <laughs> and I know some of us kind of get like a little lazy with that. So basically my procedure is, is that I, t I love something that I can spray on as I'm working and be able to like put onto a paper towel and just, you know, squirt onto the brush like this. This is a Lise Watier one. There's many out there. There's Cinema Secrets. There's many, many, many brands. Um, and then you can just kind of swirl around. And that is good for the interim. You could smell there's like a little bit of a scent to it. There's usually an alcohol component because that makes it dry quickly. If there isn't alcohol in the quick spray on versions and then you go to put it on your skin, it's going to be too wet to use. So that is what you're going to want to use in the interim when you're quickly trying to like clean through. That will not do a full clean job for you for your brushes. So. There's a couple other ways that you could manage, um, you know, kind of cleaning and disinfecting as you go. You can put some rubbing alcohol, well, you should put some rubbing alcohol inside a little bottle, or you can keep smaller bottles in your supplies, ones that squirt out or ones that you can kind of shake up and down because alcohol is a germ killer and it works really well. Just keep in mind that it will dry things out if you overuse them. Um, so. A little bit's okay on occasion okay good for quick disinfect okay but I prefer to use like brands that are built for brush cleaning and do your research again on which ones and please feel free to list your favorites below so brush cleaners are great 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 but used mainly for the interim until you get a chance to properly do a deep clean on your brushes or um, whatever tools you're using so alcohol and brush cleaners you want to have around at all times for all your interim stuff to keep everything disinfected and clean even your makeup to keep that clean your rubbing alcohol is going to be a godsend and we're going to go more into that but for now just for your brushes keep that in mind and i'll show you what else you're going to use so keeping everything clean and pristine is it's a challenge i mean you got to keep up on it for certain so making sure that you've got like a shampoo and conditioner that is reasonably decent um, because i like to shampoo and condition my brushes and basically what i do is i like to take um you know my uh something rough like sigma has a, a little bit of a plastic um mat where it has little bumps on it that help you but you don't need that kind of thing you can use your hand and wiggle things into your hand and um, wash and shampoo it and then i like to just take a little bit of uh, conditioner afterwards and plop that on but with the conditioner because i go through a whole big bunch i usually get a bigger bottle something more inexpensive because this one is quite expensive uh, and then um, condition the hair on the brushes most of them are 
a lot of them are natural hair but even if they're not they also condition well and um, if it's really gooped up with conditioner you'll want to rinse the conditioner off if it's a brush that you want to kind of like have the leave on leave in for a little while that's fine to do but like with my hair hair I leave in a lot of conditioners and I don't wash it off but with your brushes I do recommend you just rinsing those out squeezing out the excess uh, water and then laying them down flat and making sure that they're positioned nicely and I let them dry overnight and usually the next day early in the day they're not quite dry maybe for a day or two they might not even be fully dry the thicker thicker fluffier ones like these guys here might take a little bit longer to dry and let those dry out and then they're ready to use that is one of the reasons it's good to have maybe a couple sets of brushes because if you're needing you know to get ready and it's not dry yet and you want your brushes and they're not dry and plus you just it's nice to ha not always have to wash them so frequently so washing your brushes is a really big thing and I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about that um, ahead of time and if you're having a really 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 tough time um, navigating and you can also spray a little bit of alcohol on them if you're having a really hard time navigating the cleansing products that you have or you run out of something you can use products that are for your face just in the interim like for example a eye makeup remover it'll help get a little bit of that out if you're stuck and you you run out and you just don't know what to do next um, if you use anything like a harsh soap there are brush cleaning fluids and brush cleaning soaps that are okay I haven't really fallen in love with any yet if you guys have any that you really love let me know there are ones that are okay to me but nothing to me works as good as the stuff that I'm showing you and you guys are open to your own opinions on that everybody has their favorites so I just wanted to talk to you guys about that let's go on to more cleaning products all right let's go to eye makeup removers <laughs> now I have switched over to using tube mascaras for the most part I mean they're maybe not all as amazing as far as like making your lashes look massive but the taking off process especially as you become more mature rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and rubbing your eyes to get your makeup off is not really fun so you want to make sure that you've got and you've tried some eye makeup removers that you like some of them have oils and some of them don't have oil some of them are gel some of them are liquid there's one from Sephora here. There's one with uh, Boomex Beauty. Everybody has their preferences, and you're going to need to find your own preference. But it, in terms of like working around the eye area, I really like to work with uh, any kind of Q-tips that are not too fluffy on the surface so that you can get real detailed in certain areas and corners and things like that. Because the real, real fluffy ones, they can um, get stuck in and around the eye area, especially when you're... Uh, doing makeup and you're trying to get in there and you get a fluff or two in there it's a it's a real headache so keep that in mind in terms of um, your eye makeup remover and some of them are not built for sensitive eyes so you want to keep that in mind as well and play with some trial and error when we get to the assignment I'll talk to you more about that but those are really important things to keep with you I would suggest keeping a variety some that are um, gentle some that are stronger and you know some that are uh, just you know moderate so <laughs> gentle moderate and really strong depending on what you're doing and if you're wearing like a waterproof or whatever mascara it's a lot to get off and so <laughs> Taking your makeup off can be a big thing. So make sure you're using products or if you're taking it off on someone else, products that are going to work really, really, really well for you, especially around the eyes. I also just, while we're here, want to talk about um, the remover pads. There are also same thing, the cotton balls that are real fluffy. You guys have seen them, the fluffy cotton balls. I don't have any here. Those ones um, will just like, make a little bit of a mess out of your face so try to work towards the cotton pads something soft gentle and easy to work with so cotton pads to remove not cotton balls because they're going to make a fuzzy mess out of your eyes and out of your face all right of course cleansers when we talk about cleanser we talked about skincare cleansers 
for the skin, you know, with all of the variety that there is with the balms and the gels and the creams and the foamy and the beauty bar. There's so many. So we're not really diving that into that, that heavily right now. I really enjoy as a mature woman, I enjoy the cleansing balms that might not be for everybody. So just keep this, these little options in mind and let's move to our assignment, you guys. Mm -hmm. So your assignment, should you choose to accept it, is going to be um, to try out some different brush cleaners. I suggest at least one or two kinds. And, uh, you know, go into the drugstore, pharmacy, and then also into like a Sephora, Alter, whatever, department store, and try out, try out some heavy duty like eyeliner or uh, mascara and then try it out on your hand and see how well it takes it off so that you can decide if it's something you want to do also like the professional ones like cinema secrets those are really really good ones to try too if you want to experiment i suggest having at least two if you can have three um, and that way you've got backups and you've got a bit of a variety in there and something will work for you as far as the eye makeup removers you want to make sure you have an oil free that you have um, one with oil and one for very sensitive eyes as well in case you run into anybody and who has that issue and also there's the wipes you guys know that there's wipes all kinds of wipes so if you guys want to try some wipes out as well I don't lean towards the wipes I don't know if that's just because that's not what I was raised working with um, but if you guys have some super super fabulous removers please list them below because we all can use your advice but it's all about personal preference as well so your assignment is to try out some of these things in the drugstore to write your favorites write the price point see how long they last because sometimes a product can be really awesome but it doesn't last long enough and so then we're in a bit of trouble there because then you're running through them every 10 minutes like I find these are amazing but they don't last terribly terribly long so keep that in mind if you're using them more for commercial use and I hope this has been helpful and gave you a little bit of information um, I also suggest to keep a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in your supplies as well for earrings or for whatever um, you might need to really heavily disinfect before you put it on so that you've got something super powered so you've got these two monsters here that are great disinfectors um, as well as, of course, your hand sanitizer or whatever else you're using. So I hope that's been helpful. Don't forget to stay tuned for tomorrow. We're going to be moving on to that.